While there are many differences between the Western and Eastern schools of thought, one of the major differences is the use of abstracts and concretes. Just as artwork may be created in the abstract or the concrete, words can also be created in the abstract or concrete. A concrete word, idea, or concept is something that can be perceived by the five senses. It can be seen, heard, smelled, tasted, or touched. An abstract is something that cannot be perceived by the five senses. As the Bible was written from an Eastern philosophical perspective, it is important that we recognize that we cannot interpret it through our own Western philosophy. To do so would place a meaning and interpretation that may not be that of the original authors. Thorleif Bowman's monumental work, Hebrew Thought Compared with Greek, states, The thinking of the Old Testament is primitive and hence can be compared only with the thinking of other primitive peoples and not with the thinking as advanced as Plato's or Bergson's. Victor H. Matthews explains how the culture of the Hebrews can be studied in his book, Manners and Customs of the Bible. One of the joys of studying the Bible is attempting to reconstruct the manners and customs of the peoples of ancient times. The gulf of thousands of years can be bridged, at least in part, by insights into their everyday life. These can be generated through the close examination of the biblical narratives and through the use of comparative written and physical remains from other ancient civilizations. George Adam Smith said, The Hebrews were mainly a doing and feeling people, thus their language has few abstract terms. Rather, Hebrew may be called primarily a language of the senses. The words originally express concrete or material things and movements or actions which struck the senses or started the emotions. Only secondarily and in metaphor could they be used to denote abstract or metaphysical ideas. These same concrete concepts of Eastern thought can also be found in primitive cultures today that have not been influenced by Western culture. Dan Everett presents a striking similarity between the language and philosophy of the primitive Piraha tribe in the Amazon and the ancient Hebrews. I'm going to talk to you about a people that are called in the literature the Pitahas, but who don't even know what that word means themselves. They call themselves the Hiaichehe, and they talk something like this. Which means, don't speak with a crooked head to me, speak with a straight head. And their language is called a straight head. And you guessed what our language is called, a crooked head. They call themselves the straight ones. Another aspect of concrete thought is the method of conveying direction. Exodus 38, verses 9 through 13, describe the directions of the court in relationship to the four sides of the tabernacle. The Hebrew words used for these four directions are Negev, meaning the desert region, Tzaphon, meaning the unknown region, Yam, meaning the sea, specifically the Mediterranean, Kadem, meaning the region of the rising sun. Again, the Pitaha tribe parallels this style of thought. One of the things that frustrated me when I was, um, one of the many things when I was starting to work with the Pitaha was trying to find the words for left and right. So I would say, this is my left hand. And so I would say in Portuguese, which means nothing to them because they don't speak Portuguese, but I had to say something. Mão esquerda. And they would say, okay, hand. Okay, that's my right hand. Hand. That's your other hand. Uh, so after a while, you know, I couldn't get this, and I thought, I must be a terrible linguist. I can't even get left hand or right hand. And then one of them said, you know, that hand's upriver and this hand is downriver. And I said, you know, why are they introducing this irrelevant stuff? I'm trying to get left hand or right hand here. And so we went out to the jungle, and I said, okay, now I'll find it. They'll tell this guy to turn left or turn right. So, so they said, hey, turn upriver. And we're in the middle of the jungle, and he turns upriver. And they said, turn downriver. Turn towards the center of the jungle. Turn towards the water. I realized that, and this turns out not to be unique to the Pitaha, many other groups have this, they use systems of absolute direction. It's as though we only use north, south, east, and west 
rather than left or right. And we know that left or right are really not the best way to give directions because if I stand up here and tell you to turn left and use my left, that's your right. Uh, but if I tell you to turn up river, where's the closest river? Well, if you were a Pitaha, you would know that. <coughs> if you were a Pitaha, you would have a map of your local environment in your head. 